Thank you, uh, Paul Beckman, for inviting me here. Thank you, Randall Brown, for uh, introducing me to Episodic as a form of flash fiction. And to Joe Ponapinto, who's the editor of the Tahoma Literary Review, which first published this piece. Sleeping Beauty, Marks and Fangirl. His mother was an American Red Cross nurse during the war. She helped soldiers via art therapy and did not fear their quiescent growth and healing. Her obituary said she made expert toys out of everyday items. A violinist, she was married to an art historian. She was a golden casket that held four sons Bruno, Apollo, Charles P., and the artist Mark Tanzi. In his film Traffic, Steven Soderbergh uses colored lenses. When the lens is blue, there's a sober calm before the storm. Tanzi uses a lot of blue, and he's very awake when he does it, cultivating small fields of canvas and working against time. The thorns give way to flowers, but for a short while. It's now or a hundred years from now. Language is a spindle dancing, so a wheel of words was alluring. A Times reporter said Tansy's wheel was a handmade metaphor machine. He uses it for a coffee table now. He's rolling gesso instead of ink. I don't require wheels to raise questions. I don't have a wheel. I've got a splinter. The Broad Museum wasn't quite open, but it would be soon. During its great and rapid change, Stark Attacks offered fly-through video simulations. The camera eye floats along the outside of the neighboring Disney Bamith, a brushed steel landlocked Gary Bateau. The eye pauses at 29 seconds, takes a deep breath, and psychs itself up to make ready and charge the sleeping raw. At 33, superfluous graphic details vanish, and the camera makes the broad seem slutty, <laughs> like it's go time. Get in the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> the eye skitters sideways and swings past a big divot, a cataract in the outer veil. At 47 seconds, the camera darts through the curtain and into the haunted lobby. The camera glides to the bottom of an escalator and flies up through a white pipe. Maybe escalators are slow motion pea shooters, and I'm an architect's cannon fodder in the war against sunlight. The roving eye lingers in the building exoskeleton with blue sky and, wait a second, there are no walls to nail art. The camera then jukes, evading my question, leading me to believe it's going anywhere but back downstairs, but down it strikes, thinking about its next great leg. The camera backs out through a glass wall so it doesn't hear my accusations What's to become of those eight archived tansies? They're monochromatic. They can't take a fade. <laughs> I wonder if the soul of Andre Breton gives a rat's ass about painting swathed in sunlight. The Gary next door is the big broad space tanning reflector. These two buildings show part of the problem that art reveals. They're a tansy composition where one is able to study the undercarriage of a car that the other is about to cream it with. Paintings don't even have to be there anymore. Their questions have been raised. Paintings, like me, will be violated without pleasure, without sin, as they sleep. Clement Greenberg is in the center of a painting. Thank God someone else identified him. Greenberg said, where the old masters created an illusion of space into which one could imagine walking, the illusion created by a modernist is where one can look, can travel through, only 
with the eye. Greenberg likes Mondrian, so Tansy didn't put Mondrian in the painting. Greenberg implies him, but I see Mondrian in there. I see him in his two blind eyes. The Scots ginned up a metaphor mapping database. I tried it. It cannot subtract or generate hallucinations. The machine didn't calculate that letters were little stabbings. Language, a penitent's hair shirt spread over tansies that bloomed in rib cages like Purcell hymns. For instance, a metaphor stumbles into a bar, and it tosses his hat across the room, and it lands on a hook. The metaphor, the metaphor machine cannot do that. Its hat stays parked there, cockeyed on a chair, cools its engine. Too late, I wanted to write to David Markson, who had written to Malcolm Lowry, who had written to Conrad Aiken. I couldn't think of who would appreciate being my Markson, so I mailed a letter to Tansy. I don't know if my letter startled or offended him. I'm a sleepwalker. I'm a meter maid. Chalking wheels and issuing summonses. Thank Woo! You.